With Fnaf Security Breach's release being just under two weeks away, I thought now would be a good time to do a prediction and thought video on Security Breach. And I don't want to waste any time at all in this video, so let's just get straight into the video. So as Scott has straight up told us, Security Breach is going to be an absolutely massive game. But what exactly does that mean? From what we know, it seems like it's just going to be one night, so how exactly would they make the game so big? Obviously the map is pretty big, and there's a possibility that we will return to Fredbear's Family Diner or possibly the original Freddy's, kind of like in the Silver Eyes, but in just one night, how would that work? My guess is that each hour will be split up and function as if it's their own night. But what if, and I think this would be kind of cool, but what if the game was in real time? That's right, the entire game would be a full six hours. That might seem absurd, but like, like I said, Scott confirmed that the game is massive, and the Steam page also further proves that. The game is really big. And we would also obviously need more time so that we were actually able to explore the mall, since it's so big. Otherwise, the entire map would be kind of pointless. Also, in the February trailer, we do see on Gregory's watch that the time is 12.09, meaning we are getting actual specific times, and I think that does kind of hint at it being in real time, or maybe, maybe half real time, which would still make the game 3 hours. And here's something a lot of people are excited for, but I'm actually a bit iffy about. The game is free roam. A lot of people have been wanting free, a free roam FNAF game for a long time, but I don't think it would work as well as people would hope. See, if the game is free roam, nearly every animatronic would have a very similar gameplay AI. They see you, they chase you, they hear a noise, they go to the noise, and as we see in the newer trailer, you can lure animatronics using sounds. So maybe one of the animatronics will be immune to that or something, but with the gameplay, the game might get a little repetitive, and that's something I'm kind of worried about. But hey, with how hard Steel Wool have been working on the game over the past couple years, they're probably going to do something interesting with it. We will see, obviously. <laughs> Um, I just hope they, they manage to impress me and every, anyone else who may feel the same as I do. But don't get me wrong, this does not mean I'm not excited for the game. It will probably be incredible no matter what. It's a FNAF game, I'll probably love it anyway. I'm just a little worried that it may not live up to everyone's standards, but hey, it probably will. You don't know yet because the game isn't out yet. But anyway, uh, one other thing that we basically already know is bound to happen is Vanny will hack the animatronics and they will attack us. But Freddy's on our side, but it's hinted at in the newer trailer that at a certain point of the game, Freddy will get hacked and turn on us, leaving us with only a couple things at our disposal. So at a certain point in the game, it seems, it seems like all the animatronics will get destroyed or at least broken and thrown into some area un underground, most likely the trash caves we see in the newer trailer. I think this is the case mostly due to the fact that we see uh, broken down Glamrock Chica down there, but not on only that, we see the Nightmare Yon looking helper bots seemingly in this area. In MacPat's newer theory on Security Breach, he talked about how the tentacle things are most likely baby rather than the puppet, but there's a couple things he didn't consider, one of which is the helper bots. MacPat didn't even think about the fact that the helper bots look almost exactly like Nightmare Yon, and they even have In Your Dreams painted on their chests, likely alluding to how Nightmare Yon is a nightmare animatronic, and this all implies that the characters are possessed or controlled by Charlotte, aka the puppet. As we learn in the leaked pages of the FNAF Ultimate Guide, the FNAF 6 fire didn't work, or at least it mostly didn't work. So it's entirely possible that Happiest Day actually happened later than in the timeline, possibly being the final event in the timeline in entirely. That means Cassidy, the Bite Victim, and Charlotte are all free. In fact, the leaked sounds of the FNAF AR Golden Freddy skin, although at this point the skin might already be out depending on when I release this video, but still, the Golden Freddy skin makes the sounds of children whispering. Children, not a child. Multiple. This could be referencing that there are possibly two spirits in Golden Freddy, but that theory is still debatable and it's heavily debated. Um, but either way, this the, this could mean Happy's Day happens later on the timeline and Puppet could still be out there. 
or possibly Happy's Day was after FNAF 6, but the puppets stayed behind to keep Cassidy safe or to watch over William to make sure he doesn't do anything or something. There's also Lefty in the FNAF AR trailer and maybe eventually coming to the game, which could possibly hint at the puppet's return even further. But what will the puppet do in the game exactly? That is the question. Well, first off, I don't think the puppet will return itself in the actual form of Lefty. I think it'll, it'll most likely be a Nightmarion-esque form or only through possession of the animatronics in the game. The reason I don't think Le it will be Lefty is because Lefty hasn't been added to FNAF AR yet and the new FNAF AR DLC thing probably won't be the thing to add him because Lefty really just doesn't fit in the Dark Circus, I don't think. And after that, I don't think there will be enough time for Lefty to appear another time before Security Breach comes out. I do think the puppet will return in a form similar to Nightmare On based on the tentacles and the design of the helper, bo helper bots. It probably won't be the exact same as Nightmare On, but it'll probably be similar. I don't think it will be Anything will be powering William like in the books, but maybe the puppet will be the one to destroy him, similar to how Eleanor did by leaving the Afton amalgamation in the books. But that might trail into something else later down the timeline, we don't really know. It's hinted at in the in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC from FNAF VR and Golden Freddy's appearance in FNAF AR that Golden Freddy will maybe return in Security Breach. This is obviously uncertain, but I have a strong feeling it will happen. It's possible that if the bite victim is still around, then maybe he is controlling Glamrock Freddy, maybe trying to stop what happened to his friends from happening to another kid. You know, murder. But that's just a little thought. Uh, but the puppet and Golden Freddy will most likely have at least some role in this game. It could also make sense for Golden Freddy to reappear in Fredbear's family diner if it really is underneath the mall. But again, we don't know that for sure. Many people speculate that there may be some type of museum in the mall, which I think makes a lot of sense. The, this place is to discredit and make fun of the old rumors about the old restaurants and stuff and to like rebrand Freddy's so it would make a lot of sense if there was like a museum featuring that old stuff. If we do it's even possible that we may pinpoint some of the dates in the previous events like Sis location which is heavily debated. It's unlikely but it is definitely possible. As we know Gregory through at least part of the game will be able to hide inside Glamrock Freddy and even move around inside him. We see this in the new trailer but we also see the f in the February trailer that Freddy has some sort of battery. I had an interesting idea for how this could work. I don't think it would actually be what ends up happening, but it was just a cool idea I thought I would tell you guys. What if Freddy had the glitch trap virus inside him, but while he's charged, he's able to fight off the infection, but that drains his battery quite quickly. So what if you had to charge him every little bit to make sure he doesn't turn on you? In short, it's like a niceness meter. Speaking of Gregory's watch, let's talk about the other stuff on there next. As we clearly see, we will be able to check out the cameras on the watch, but it looks like we will only be able to check cameras in our vicinity, which I think will be pretty cool. We are also going to have an inventory, which interests me. Uh, that means there's going to be stuff that we need to collect or keep with us to use at some point in the game. And finally, it looks like there's tickets or something on the bottom row. And that kind of interests me. It kind of makes me think that maybe we'll be able to play some of the games, like the arcade games such as Mont Monty's Golf and Roxanne's Racing, and I think that will be pretty fun if that ends up happening. Most of us expect that William will get some type of new form in Security Breach, like the Afton Amalgamation. And while I don't think he will be the same as the Afton Amalgamation, I think it will be kinda similar. But I think rather than being infected items, his new form would more likely be made up of the pieces of the broken Glamrock animatronics. I think it would fit really well within the game. Another thing I, I believe will definitely happen is Afton will get his new form and then maybe he won't need Vanny anymore, or Vanny will do something wrong, or maybe even Vanessa could start fighting back and resisting the temptations from William. But no matter what happens, I think Glitchtrap will 100% at some point kill Vanny. I think the most likely option will be that William doesn't need her anymore. This would really fit in with the with In the Flesh, where Springtrap gets a new body because Matt was infected by the game and, gla and gave Springtrap a new body, and then once that was done, Springtrap killed him. A similar situation could be could happen to Vanny, where she gets infected by Glitchtrap through playing the game, and then she gives him a new body, so after that, it's most likely that he won't need her for anything anymore, and so he'll, he'll kill her. And the last thing I want to talk about is Vanny herself. I think, and kind of hope most people, think that Vanny is Vanessa, aka the security guard. The biggest hint is that they have the same name. <laughs> There's also the FNAF AR emails where it's talked about that Vanessa, or Ness, who's very clearly Vanny by the fact that she has been searching for various cryptic stuff like help and stuff, may, it, like, gets a job as a security guard. 
just like Vanessa, the, the guard in Security Breach. Uh, Vanessa also has purple painted fingernails, which could hint at her being possessed by William, who is obviously associated with purple. We also see that Gregory hides from Vanessa in the February trailer, which implies that she is evil. But I think probably the biggest hint that Vanny is the security guard is the simple fact that there is a security guard in the game, but we don't play as them. That by itself is really weird and clearly hints at the guard being not so secretly evil. But I think that's mostly everything to talk about for this video. You may think this was kind of short for a predictions video, I mean not really, it was like 12 minutes, but, but I think all of us are expecting a lot of unexpected, and it's kind of hard to say what the ex unexpected will be, I guess, if that makes sense. I think Security Breach is going to be a great game. Once there's a pre-order available on Steam, I will 100% pre-order it and livestream uh, playing it the day it comes out. I do have to go to school on that day, but if I'm able to, I'm going to stay home on the Friday, which is my last day of school, but I'm not sure if I will. But if I can, that way I could stay up late playing the game, trying to play through the whole thing, or at least most of it. Funnily enough, Security Breach is coming out one day before Spider-Man No Way Home, which is definitely the most hype movie for me, probably, of my life. I love Spider-Man, and I love the MCU's different take on him, but both of the other Spider-Man I love even more than Tom Holland's, which is really saying a lot, considering how much I love Tom's. But, but wait, this is a Security Breach video. Um... I'm so excited for Security Breach. It's almost inevitable that it'll get hate, there will be some stuff people won't like, but it's amazing to see how far FNAF has come. It started off as a failing game developer's last ditch attempt at making a game to make money just to support his family. And now there's a full on triple, AAA game coming out on so many different platforms and with ray tracing made by a, a whole other company. Sadly, I won't be able to play with ray tracing because my PC's graphics card doesn't have ray tracing on it, but that doesn't matter. The graphics will be amazing whether I have ray tracing or not. It doesn't matter to me, I, c I care more about the game itself, and I know that I'm going to love it. I joined the FNAF fandom pretty late, around late 2018, but I've grown to love the series just as much as all of you, if not more than some of you. Um, and say what you want about FNAF, but for me, this series means a lot to me, and I'm so excited to see what the next installment has in store for all of us.